Shalom, what's up everybody? Tristan back again with another semen retention update. Uh today, you see it, 63. We in this shit. Uh effortlessly and easily. It is actually like like I keep saying, it's just easier the longer you go on this. You know what you're doing, you know why you're doing it for. Uh for me, at first it was to get out of depression and hopefully get more women and through my journey I come to realize that it's God putting me on the celibate path of non-adultery and non-fornication for, fornication what the fuck but uh yeah shit is stupid easy and I can only say that it has made me a better man like absolutely but anyways, as you guys can see from the title above or below, depending on where you guys are watching this, I'm going to be talking about how today I taught my uh, hairstylist, because she's a female, I, I wanted to say barber, I don't know if, are there, are there sexual or, what's it called, are there masculine and feminine names for people that cut hair, I have no idea, but anyways, I taught the woman that cuts my hair that she is of Israel and what this really ties into is how I was feeling like I wasn't doing any works in the name of the Lord like uh, for a long for a little bit of time I stopped going to Sabbath because of my situation how it is right now um, I'm now even farther away from IUIC than I was when I was living with my Eda my uncle but uh you know I just really got down in my spirit. I got like, um, what do you call? I felt really ashamed. I felt like I wasn't serving God to the best of my ability. And today I kind of had a realization that I can really do works wherever that it's needed because this woman had no idea she was of Israel. And I'm assuming God used me to get to her. I was literally getting my hair cut she was asking why I'm rocking the fringes. I have four in a tire over it, but I, I make sure to pull my fringes down so that people can see. You know, is that focused? There we go. Uh, but yeah, being in, you know, a southern state of Oklahoma, I get some, you know, white supremacists kind of hating on it and more than likely they're thinking I'm a terrorist because of the news but you know I don't portray terrorist vibes but that's besides the point but yeah I was rocking my fringes she asks about what are those I explain that it's to remind us to do the commandments in our best ability and to look upon these whenever we're feeling like we're going astray uh, she was like wow that's actually pretty beautiful so long story short I get into telling her how Blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, which she is. She's a Spanish, aka Mexican woman, um, Issachar. But, uh, yeah, and I was just really just using what I have learned from the Bible and what has been portrayed to me to conversate with her. And all the while, she's just like so many questions that I knew the answers to. Um, and then we finally get to like a spirituality talk where she shared a Dalai Lama post on Facebook about how uh, Dalai Lama says he would rather go to hell so that he could help more people in there. And she was like, what do you think about this? And I straight up told her the whole spirituality movement is really tied to the false god Lucifer or the light bringer, which is the state of America or an ancient Assyrian god of the sun. But yeah, I got real deep into this shit. Like, I, I explained everything that I could that I knew because I was, like I've said in a previous video, I went as far left as you could possibly go. I wanted to be a god. I, on LSD, I thought I was Jesus. Like, all these blasphemous things. And I was just telling her how pretty much Dalai Lama is saying that he's putting himself on an even playing field with the Most High God. And that in itself is disrespectful as all hell. He's saying that he can save the damned and that God isn't the only one that can do that. And she was just like, whoa, I didn't think about it like that. You're really deep. And then I was like, yeah, I've been contemplating this shit almost my entire life. 
So don't fuck around. You'll get schooled. But um, she was trying to make it sound like Dalai Lama was a good, peaceful, you know, the common, uh, what's it called? Uh, I keep saying, uh, what's it called? That's just me thinking about how to use a good word to explain it. So I'm sorry if I use that too much, but she was explaining how he was like peaceful for the people trying to do God's work. And I told her only Israel or the prophets, AKA you, but you don't know it, AKA myself can do God's work. And that's to awaken the children of Israel. So I actually did works today. I explained to her and she was like, by the end of it, she was like really intrigued. I told her to visit IUIC and see what she thinks about it. But um, like I was saying, Dalai Lama is pretty much a uh, false prophet or a misleading spirit or a, what is the term I'm thinking of? It's like on the tip of my tongue. Deceiver. Yes, deceiver. Um, it's actually crazy, because she was really about to go on to this, like, I think Dalai Lama is Hinduism, I think, or, what's it called, the Kabbalah, uh, so on, so-called Semitic or Jewish mysticism, which isn't really Jewish mysticism, because it's all linked to the, the eight-sided hexagon god, which is Lucifer. But, you know, it's just weird how I could help in that way. And I got, I feel like I helped a soul today come into the truth knowing who she is. And it made me feel really good. I was sad that I wasn't serving God to the best of my abilities. And I did it casually today. Like, I was like, you know you are of the children of Israel. You're Spanish. You're Issachar, right? And she was like, I've always thought about that deep in my soul. And I knew the world was falling and crumbling around us in my heart but I didn't know how to go about it and I I destroyed her Catholicism you know Holy Mary uh indoctrination that she was under I told her about the divine feminine and the divine masculine and how that's an Edomite slash uh I always forget the second term for m modern day white man Edomite and ah <sighs> Edom and Jacob and Esau. There we go. It, I always think it starts with an E, but it's an I. Um, yeah, I was telling her how modern day Edom and Esau forced that whole masculinity and divine feminine fusing together to make unification type thing, which now we're seeing in the physical manifestation of androgyny with the music and uh, makeup industry. Have you guys seen Jeffree Star? Dude oozes out androgynous sexuality. Like, it's crazy. He is a female man, a man-female. Like, there's no borderline anymore of what is what and what is which. And it's just weird, like, how I could easily explain it to her how she'd been misled. And how she easily hearkened unto the voice of the Lord just by me speaking those words. Like, it was actually... It was a beautiful thing, and I'm kind of amazed that I was able to do that. But, yeah, guys, th that's it for today's video. I just wanted to speak on that. Uh, as far as news with the job, I got the job. I can start working at McDonald's now. But, lo and behold, I get called by 7-Eleven, and they're like, we'd like to set up an interview. And I'm like, bro, 850 or 1350 I don't know, I, I already have two jobs with McDonald's and Burlington Coat Factory. I work 6 to 10 at Burlington, get off, go to McDonald's at 12 to 9. I think I could do three jobs, but I don't want to work myself to death. But, you know, if I go in at 9 to 12, I mean uh, 12 to 9, get off, work at 7-Eleven on night shifts... I think I could be making some serious guap in the future right now. And the Most High is lining up everything so effortlessly in my life. And all I can say is all, all praises to the Most High Christ bless. And uh, yeah, guys, shalom.